Hello everyone. Welcome to our first video on the topic of dynamic eigen modes part 1, the concept and theory. My name is John T. Kim. The idea of the dynamic eigen mode was first conceived by myself several years ago as a way to deal with parameter variations that may exist within dynamic systems. At the time, I was working on reduced dimensional modeling and construction of large scale dynamic systems a topic that has blossomed over the past 20 to 30 years in the general community of engineering and science. As the name suggests, dynamic eigenmodes are a type of eigenmodes amongst which is the solution of the well-known equation ax is equal to lambda x. But unlike the traditional solution, the new eigenmodes change with time and carry memory effects through their time evolution and hence are capable of doing things that the traditional eigenmodes cannot. Most importantly, dynamic eigenmodes lead to the newly found invariance or symmetry in physics, namely the gauge model invariance. For a wider spread of this new invention, we decided to produce videos to explain in detail the concept and theory as well as its applications. We hope that you will enjoy these videos no matter what your background and expertise are. Next, Shen Siddiqui will present the main body of the first video. Traditionally, a system response can be expressed as a superposition of static modes given by the traditional eigenvalue problem a phi equals lambda phi where A is a system matrix describing the system dynamics. The problem with this method is that phi cannot account for parameter variations, so that is, if A changes, we will need to resolve and find new eigenvectors which can describe those new parameters. Consider the example of the two degree of freedom mass spring damper, where we have two masses, three springs, and two dampers. We can sum forces on each mass to generate the system of equations. For a state vector x of t, 2 by 1, containing the varying positions of the masses, we get the following matrix equation. We can define mass, stiffness, and damping matrices, allowing us to convert the problem into a first-order system. At this point, we may solve the traditional eigenvalue problem a phi equals lambda phi. In doing so, we achieve a set of static modes that represent any solution for this fixed system. Visualizing these vectors in the plane, we see phi1 representing the in-phase motions and phi2 representing out-of-phase. Superpositions of these can represent any motion that the mass spring can take. Now we will explore what happens if we change system properties, like increasing the spring stiffness. Our computed eigenvectors do not include this parameter variation in their span, so we need some method of broadening the modal space to account for this. In the diagram, we see the same mass spring damper setup except spring 1 has increased in stiffness. Consider now the dynamic eigenmodes, which vary as a function of time. To express a system response in the time domain, we will need to take the convolution between the dynamic eigenmodes and the generalized coordinates A. In the frequency domain, this becomes multiplication and a standard superposition. So here we are leveraging the memory effect of the time convolution to account for the parameter variations. Visualizing this in R3 now, we see our static eigenmodes remain stuck in the plane, while our dynamic eigenmodes are free to account for parameter variations in the higher modal space.
Computing dynamic eigenvectors is very similar to the conventional eigenvectors. They come as a result of solving an eigenvalue problem in the frequency domain for the transfer function matrix, T phi equals lambda phi. In order to find our transfer function matrix, we need first a state space representation of our system. For the purposes of the mass spring damper, we have a linear time invariant system. However, we are changing parameters. So here we see our state x, output y, and input u with parameter variation accounted for in mu. Split up the system now into nominal and perturbed parts, where the nominal is some fixed condition, some fixed parameters, and the perturbed is some variation from that. Plugging those into the state space representation of our system, we find a nominal equation and a perturbed equation. Note that the homogeneous part is parameter dependent. In the frequency domain, we can define the transfer function matrix connecting the nominal solution and the perturbed solution. An eigen decomposition of this matrix gives us left and right dynamic eigenvectors v and w and the dynamic eigenvalues lambda. The rank of the system will be that of delta A, which will be less than or equal to the full rank of the system N. An analytic function, f of lambda, may operate on only the dynamic eigenvalues of A, just like a standard diagonalization. Take an analytic function, f of lambda, defined as 1 plus lambda inverse times lambda. Apply that to the transfer function matrix to get T prime, a new transfer function matrix that eliminates delta A from the homogeneous part. However, we retain the same right and left eigenmodes as before. The eigenvalues have changed in a predictable way, I plus lambda inverse times lambda, just like our analytic function. Through this, we can see that the T prime and T share the same eigenvectors. These dynamic eigenvectors span the solution space for the system. So we can say that t and t prime share the same solution space. This is modal equivalence. By eliminating the dependence on delta a, we show that the dynamic eigenvectors are resistant to changes in parameters, exactly what we wanted to achieve at the start. Looking back at our system, we retain the same nominal equation for the fixed parameters, and having demonstrated the modal equivalence of t and t prime, we may exchange our perturbed system for the modally equivalent perturbed system, or MEPS. For the example of the two degree of freedom mass spring system, where we've introduced an incremental change in spring one, we get this system of equations by summing forces on the masses. In matrix form, this may be represented compactly, with matrices M0 and C0 defined exactly as before, and K0 defined for the fixed parameters with the incremental change alpha delta K. Splitting up the solution X into nominal and perturbed parts X0 and delta X, and substituting those into the equation of motion, we split up our system into a nominal equation and a perturbed equation. And we can transform our perturbed equation into a modally equivalent perturbed system, leveraging that modal equivalence principle. In the frequency domain, we may relate x0 and delta x with the transfer function matrix T with the corresponding eigen decomposition. X0 and delta X prime may be related by T prime, the modally equivalent perturbed system, with its own respective eigen decomposition, which shares the same eigenvectors as T, however varies in eigenvalue. Now imagine an enormous system with 1 million degrees of freedom. The computation to compute the static eigenmodes would need to be done repeatedly for each change in stiffness. 
whereas with the dynamic eigenvectors, we need only to compute them once, no matter the magnitude of stiffness change. The number of non-zero eigenvalues, or the rank of delta k, is 1. Therefore, the response of the perturbed system can be expressed completely by just one dynamic eigenvector. The total solution space then, accounting for both parameter variation and the system dynamics, will be the sum of the two vector spaces, one from the nominal solution and the other from the modally equivalent perturbed system. Multiplication in the frequency domain is convolution in the time domain, so we may obtain our time domain system response by a time convolution between dynamic eigenmode, dynamic eigenvalue, and the nominal solution. For the two degree of freedom mass spring damper system with changing spring stiffness on spring number one, we can account for parameter variation with the result of this convolution. The left and right dynamic eigenvectors we see give these waveforms with change accordingly to the parameters. Eigenvalues in the middle actually show a very irregular waveform corresponding to the changing dynamic eigenvalues with respect to the parameter variation. In summary, we have seen static and dynamic eigenmodes distinguished from one another. We have observed on the two degree of freedom mass spring damper system with spring one changing stiffness that the dynamic eigenmodes are valid throughout parameter variations while the static modes are not. Applications of the idea extend beyond parameter variation to linear and nonlinear model reduction, flutter prediction, LCO prediction, characteristically rich vector spaces, and as John mentioned at the start, gauge modal invariance. If you wish to get ahead of the videos, please see the references in the description. Thank you for watching, and please like the video, leave a comment with any questions, share, and subscribe to the channel for more dynamic eigen decomposition, theory, and applications. We will continue our discussion of dynamic eigen decomposition in part two of this presentation, and hope to see you there.